Welcome back, Stas23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and today I have for you the AM8 Knives Flix, and I don't know if it's AMA Knives and Miguron, or they're just sold by Miguron, or AM8 is Miguron, I don't know. I bought this off the Miguron site, and uh, this bad boy comes in at $195.00. And let's get some specs out of the way so you have an idea of the size of the knife. You have a total length of 8.37 inches, so it's a full-size knife. You have a blade length of 3.5 inches. You have a grip area from here to here of 3.75 inches. If you want to use that forward toil, you have a grip area of 4.5 inches. You have a little above average handle scale thickness at 0.55 and your clothes width in the pocket is pretty slender at uh, 1.19 inches. And your blade stock thickness comes in at 0.118. And your behind the edge thickness is a pretty chunky 25 thousandths. And this one is sharpened at 23 degrees per side. All right, let's take a closer look at this. You have a nice, attractive drop point blade of a Bowler M390 stainless steel, which is a very high edge retention uh, steel, one of your super steels, and it has a pretty high satin finish on it. It's pretty reflective, as you can see there. There I am. Uh, on this side, you have the AM8 logo, and on this side, you have the blade steel designation right there. You have a nice full length uh, top swedge. I think it looks rather attractive. And uh, you have a pretty robust tip there. I don't think you have to be super careful up here in the front. It's pretty uh, thick. You do have a small row of jimping. However, it's not really uh, there for any extra grip. Um, however, I didn't feel the need to have any jimping. I didn't feel like I was sliding off the blade or anything. Um, you do have a forward finger toil. It's uh, it, it's not the biggest choil. Um, if you have fat sausage fingers, you, you're probably not going to want to really use this. Or at least you could just use the tip of your finger maybe. Um, I use it a good bit. I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't super worried about it. But I was definitely uh, mindful that it was, it was that forward finger choil also acts as like a sharpening choil. Um, it did clear the plunge line. However, I uh, got this knife with a subpar factory edge and one that I was just not going to test this knife with. So it is now wearing my edge. And <clears throat> you can see after that first sharpening, it started to uh, widen up a little bit in the back. Not terrible, uh, but the next sharpening it'll probably start to get uh rather wide there in the back um on this side of the blade you see you have a little fuller cut out right here that is a second deployment option it is blasted in the inside and uh there's a chamfer going all the way around there so it, it's kind of smooth which is not usually what you want for you know a opening method like that now that the knife is wearing my edge, I would love to see how well their M390 holds up and how that thick edge bevel is going to play out when we're cutting through some of this stuff. So let's check it out. We get started on the cardboard first and Unless the edge is not that great, uh, cardboard usually isn't a problem, especially single wall cardboard. It was zipping through the here without a problem. Handle was extremely comfortable and I felt locked in. I noticed uh, myself using that forward choil for this portion because I didn't want to get hung up in that area with the cardboard. Um, that is definitely something you want to be mindful of if you don't use the forward finger toil. But felt good and it uh, stayed sharp all the way to the end. Now we move on to the Pine 2x4 to test that edge, how well it's still biting and more so test the ergos. And even though the knife is pretty thick behind the edge, you can still make some decently thin curls. 
However, the thicker bevel wasn't biting that deep whenever I started putting more pressure into the cut. Uh, the ergos, however, were fantastic. Uh, the thicker uh, contoured scales really felt good in the hand. Absolutely no hot spots, and I was locked in the entire time. Then we move on to the, the odd and end uh, portion where I'm cutting all kinds of different things. Um, leather was a little difficult in that, that first portion. This part isn't because this is a little bit softer. That first one's a little tighter and it has a thick tip so it makes it a little harder to go through stuff like this not a problem especially the fact that the uh this knife has a perfect amount of belly especially when cutting on a flat surface now the both of the rubber tubings gave me a little bit of problems um i would think it's probably because of the 23 degrees per side edge bevel and the thickness behind the edge causing some friction along the uh rubber it didn't struggle through the thick uh, corner cardboard any, and it breezed through the denim. The edge still felt nice and sharp. I wasn't 100% sure about the edge until we move on over to the uh, the sw twisted sisal rope. <laughs> I started cutting the half inch twisted sisal rope, and it was evident right away that that forward portion of the edge was still very very sharp. It still had good bite to it. Uh, I was push cutting the majority of this. I mean, you can see me going through rather easily. And uh, I, I approached the 50 cuts marker and the edge still felt really, really good. Uh, so being that this was the last portion of my testing, I figured I, I could take it a lot further or I could at least try to take it further than I usually do. So I, decided to go and cut as long as I could or at least until my hands started cramping up and I ended up making 96 cuts it's pretty impressive um, I, I usually like I said I usually don't take them that far just because I have uh, other tests at like right after the rope I usually don't have the rope at the end which I might start doing that if that's something y'all rather see but um, yeah, this I just got to go on regular speed now. We're going to test the edge and watch it. It still has a pretty good working edge. And I, you know, it's pretty impressive, especially right there in the front. Now, the middle right there, probably where it was making the most contact with that wood, it had a little dull spot. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that cutting footage. I enjoyed making it for y'all. Now let's take a look at the action. Uh, you have a semi drop shot action. It's riding on ceramic bearings and a ceramic detent ball. And this is a uh, front, flip, front flipper design. And you have this little window right here to do the spotty flick. Now I have two issues with the, uh, the action. First off, the front flipper, as you can see, it's already flush right here. So you're gonna have to really, you know, get a good push to uh, to get it to fire out. And this jimping is pretty slick for me. I don't get a whole lot of traction because you can see it. Hopefully, you can see that it's rounded over. Um, now you get some grip, but it's not a whole lot. And the detent on mine is fairly stout. It's got a nice, you know, it's it's not coming out. And that makes it pretty hard for me to reliably, I can do it, but it's not, it's not the easiest uh, front flipper to use, especially for somebody like myself that's not always the best at front flipping. Um, can you, you, that hurts. <laughs> no, that hurts bad. It's just, this is just way too slick. And then being that the detent's kind of strong, you have such a small little uh, hole back there that has a chamfer on it. It's kind of slippery. So what I have to do is, is make sure I bury my finger all the way down in there and give it a good spotty flick. So for me, the action is a complete miss for me. Um, 
it, like I said, it's smooth, it's snappy, but the detent's a little too strong for me, and I wish they would have did some fine cut jimping right there to uh, give me more grip. Now let's move on to the handle scales, which I think are beautiful. You have this beautiful milling in the titanium bolster right here. You have a uh, uh, blue anodized titanium pivot and a brass pivot collar. I guess it's brass or maybe that's another titanium pivot collar anode. Not too sure. You have a nice chamfer going all the way around. And you have very nice 3D contoured uh, scales. That's why the ergonomics were outstanding. Uh, that coupled with the pretty much a neutral uh, grip here besides these little uh, forward areas right here. Um, the marble carbon fiber looks nice. There's no voids that I can see. Now I may come through on camera that you can see something that I can't. But I think it looks nice. It's finished well. There, the transition feels good, especially because you're going into this uh, milling. Uh, the fitment is pretty good. You got a little little bit of gap right there. Not really a gap, but just, you know, how it's fitting. But, I mean, I don't think, you know, from here you're not going to see that. And I like the way they didn't just cut it straight across. They kind of, they kind of like, tailed it up here and tailed it down on this side. I think it looks nice. You have a T8 on the pivot, T6 on all these body screws. You have a titanium backspacer that comes up about, about half, uh, I mean a quarter of the way. It uh, blends wet perfectly with the uh, titanium, uh, what is it, liner I guess you'd call it. You have a 3D milled uh, titanium pocket clip that kind of looks like an afterthought. I think it, it looks hideous with the knife. It doesn't go with this elegant looking knife. Um, it's kind of stiff and you do not have a whole lot of room underneath there so if you wear thick pants you're gonna have some trouble let's check it out in the pocket all righty that's what you have sticking out of the pocket and it goes in okay uh, it, it's it's a little difficult but I, I don't mind the pressure as much because of the smooth carbon fiber if it was a little bit looser it might you know fly out of the pocket and you have some heft to this knife um, because you have this the thick titanium, even though it gets milled down, you have a titanium backspacer, titanium clip, and a big chunk of M390. So let's check out the weight. First off in grams, 134 grams, and 4.737 ounces. Not terrible, and I, you know, you, you'll definitely know you have a knife in your pocket, but it wasn't weighting me down or anything. All right, now let's check out the lockup. Alrighty, you can see you have a screw right here. You do have a hardened steel lock interface that is uh, changeable if, if need be. Um, your lockup is sitting, I'd say, at around 30%. And that's one thing about this knife. When I say bank vault, I can't muster anything out of this uh, lockup. Very, very solid lockup. It, it, it feels built like a tank. Um, access to that lock bar is outstanding because you have this cutout right here plus the chamfer with the texture so it's comfortable to disengage that lock um, very very comfortable no internal milling but you don't usually see internal milling be with something like this because they milled out all this titanium to put the, the carbon fiber cover that doesn't weigh much at all anyway Quick size comparisons, uh, Spyderco PM2, Spyderco Para 3. The PM2 is almost identical in length. We have the Hogue Ritter RSK and the RSK Small, uh, very similar to the full size RSK. All right, nitpicks and complaints. I'm gonna tell you right now, I had very, very high hopes for this knife because right before this knife, I had purchased this one and I like this one a lot. It did have some problems with it, but it was very, very close to being a very, very excellent knife. Um, I sharpened this one up recently, been carrying it a lot, super smooth. Now, first off, as soon as I got this knife, I noticed, I don't know if you could see this, but right above the edge bevel, you could see that discoloration 
hopefully you can, it's coming across. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, and what that is, is, is they're using a buffing wheel or paper wheel or something like that to power strop this knife after they uh, sharpen it on, I guess, a belt grinder or something like that. And they're over buffing it and they're buffing it too high, causing it to polish that area a little bit. So it just looks, to me, I, it, it's, I cannot stand, it, it just drives me nuts when I see that. So that already bums me. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of uh, satin finishes as is. And then this higher satin is a fingerprint magnet. I would have loved to see them pull this out a little bit further. That way you have more of a forward finger choil so it fits, you know, like bigger people's hands as well. And you wouldn't uh, be thickening, thickening up back here once you sharpen it up. While we're talking about thick, the edge bevel behind the edge is pretty darn thick for such a classy looking this just doesn't look like a hard use knife to me but if that's what you're buying it for cool um but I, I would have loved to see it down to at least like 20 thousandths could have still used it hard then um and for me the action is probably the biggest deal because you know you got to be able to open the knife and i I probably fail the deployment on this 50% of the time. Whenever I just grab it to open it, I slide off of it and then, or if I try to come right here, it's hard to get my finger in there as it is and then um, getting it without slipping off of that like I just did uh, is an issue. So for me, that you know really, really just brought me down on the knife as is. I love the overall aesthetics of the knife. I think it's beautiful. Um, I think the pocket clip was another afterthought it just <laughs> there's no styling to it you have all this nice milling right here and then you just have that blah so i don't know felt like uh, this one was a step back and you know i think it was even more of a bummer because all my uh reviewer friends and stuff like that i heard them raving about theirs and i, I don't know maybe they got a good one i don't i don't know hopefully mine was just uh, a lemon and if that you know is a possibility i always get the lemon so so there you go that is my thoughts on the am8 flicks not one that i can recommend uh just mine just has too many issues so if you have any questions comments concerns please leave down below i hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day and this is not my last uh Miguron or am8 if they have something else i like i'll pick it up I haven't given up on them yet. They're, they're so close to making a perfect night for me. <laughs> All right, guys and girls, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.